guys, hello Mary meets everybody, it's Lumi and Finistra, and today it's my turn to get some video in on my channel, which has been kind of neglected. Today we're going to talk about something Michelle has been going through for the last few days, and we, for those of you who do not know, Michelle will be officially taking a weekend off on her channel um, from Saturday, uh, from Saturday afternoon until Wednesday afternoon. So she's going to be taking a few days away from her YouTube content, specifically because of she needs some time to uh unwind and relax and I wanted to talk to Michelle about that and for those of you who don't understand how that works oh this thing's crooked um Michelle and I share, share the same flesh and we have two YouTube channels and we've had two YouTube channels now for a long time and uh most of the time I spend on her channel and so I asked Michelle I said do you think you'd be willing to help me with my channel and she said yes and so we're going to cover um, a topic on my channel which on her channel probably would end up not going as well because of some of the audience and that is what's been going on with Michelle's feelings um I think that in my honest opinion uh some of Michelle's audience have been very mean to her and very cruel and I've been reading the comments and I wanted to respond to them but I realized that since they have less respect for me than they do Michelle, um, that I didn't think it would help anything. So I chose to just quite quietly just leave it be. But I am going to be able to speak. Michelle and I are going to have an interview here on my channel right now. We're going to talk about what's been going on on her channel. Good and bad alike. We're going to cover both. And um, so... First of all, um, Michelle, I'm glad that you were able to be willing to work with me on this because I thought this was a very important topic. Um, and I thank you for being here. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, let's get started with um, last Sunday when you started to, to break down in tears. What was it that was particularly triggering it? It was a variety of things, actually. Um, I think the last straw was after the creation of the Muppet Michelle character and then listening to everybody on my YouTube channel kind of razzing me and saying that Muppet Michelle is better than me as a real person. Um, I think it made me feel really... Like, I started to feel a little bit like Mars Argo, in a way. Whereas, here, Titanic Sickler finds a replacement after he breaks up with Mars Argo. And now Mars Argo is, um, pretty much was left out in the cold. Do you think, oh, well, we could cover that real quick. Let's do that. Um, the situation with Titanic Sinclair... And Mars Argo um, was a very toxic relationship in the end. Yes. Um, Mars Argo, which is Brittany Sheets, which is her real name, um, was a very capable, talented young lady. Um, she is naturally a blonde, as far as I know. Kind of like a honey blonde. Kind of like a honey blonde, yeah. Um, and... She has a voice that's a little different than Poppy's. And Mars Argo um, was working with Titanic Sinclair and they had a working relationship. And then 
Apparently, I heard that it seems they were also having a relationship outside of the job. Okay, go on. Well, anyway, uh, Titanic Sinclair, which is Corey Mixter, uh, what's his real name, uh, was treating her pretty badly, and they broke up. And so she filed in civil court in the District of Los Angeles uh, a couple allegations of um, both the domestic violence issue and the separate issue regarding um, saying that Poppy was stealing her intellectual property and content. Um, first of all, in the case of the domestic charges. I think she should have followed a criminal report. I think so too. Yeah. She certainly had justifiable cause. Because uh, he broke into her home a few times and uh, had caused her uh, a lot of emotional trauma. Um, so, as far as Poppy, um, I don't know if um, which is played by Mariah Pereira. I don't know if she's suffering uh, the same abuse of, uh, with Corey Mixter, a.k.a. Titanic Sinclair. I don't know. Okay, I don't know anything about that part. But um, when you look at the situation, like I said, how it compares to me, it was like, you know, here I am, I'm putting in all this work every day. Um, you're doing, you're, I'm doing about uh, five shows a day. I don't know, five shows a week. And I only have Tuesdays and Thursdays off. And, um, and on some of my channel, I have some really nice people and they treat me nice. They understand it's a hard job. And then I got these bad people um, that I think I don't know what the reasoning is behind their behaviors, but it's almost like they think if we be tough with you, that maybe you're going to improve, or maybe you develop a, uh, an exoskeleton that's a little more toughness, maybe. But I think that um, some of them kind of got upset when I I started to cry on Sunday night, and then. I guess the computer must have been sad too, because after I started to cry, the computer crashed. I remember, and I was saying to myself, "What's going on here? It doesn't make any sense." You know, the, you, um, the whole computer went down with a bang. The computer went down, right? And then I said, "Well, I got, I got to get back up." So I didn't know if I could get it back up easily. I should have basically just let the thing, let the computer just end that stream then, and then went ahead and gave it a few seconds to restart the computer, and then start a new stream, because that would have been better. Because the second part of the stream, I tried to do it on my phone, and the phone was a different frame rate in a different video format, and uh, it totally mucked, it totally made a mess of everything. Yeah, it did. It made a real mess. And I, so I really kind of felt like I should have done something differently. Okay. So anyway, the first part really was where all the good juicy bits were. Uh, so at least we got the first part of the, the live stream. And you're at the 328 subscribers now at this time. Yeah. Um, 328, yeah. And you got three thousand, uh, three, yeah, thirty-three hundred hours of viewer time. So theoretically, you should be eligible. You hope that maybe by January you'll have the the four thousand hours and maybe a thousand subscribers, so you can get. Uh, back on the YouTube partner program, right? But unfortunately, that's a lot of work and it's a lot of energy in being expended um, to make a program like mine work. 
Um, there are people don't really understand what goes on behind the scenes. Um, some people think that some of these videos are just like created, like, in, you know, pop a camera in front of you and start talking. Um, like, so I, there's one guy's YouTube channel I watch for a while where he was doing just that. And his content was uh, so off the rails and so disorganized that I, I just couldn't I just couldn't watch him anymore. Um, so I had to unsubscribe from his channel because I just can't I couldn't I couldn't bear to see what he was talking about. It, first of all, it's too close to home for me. Um, and it reminds me of when I first started out. We kind of did the same thing. So I understand. You know, it's okay. Um, and the second thing was, is I felt that this guy was divulging way too much of his personal life. But then again, let's be honest. It's the kind of stuff that the consumers want. You said consumers. Like, like we're talking about when you go to McDonald's or Burger King. The consumers that buy the products. Or, in this case, view the products. Yeah, I I know that sounds kind of cold, but the truth is, is that YouTube has created a market of consumers um, and producers. The producers, let's include me and you, are producing content. And there are people who consume the content. And there's passive consumers, that is... They quietly turn on a video and just zone out. And then you have the active ones that try to engage the host or hostess uh, in, in, you know, in comments and chats. And that's, the interaction is good, usually. Yeah, usually. Um, but some of the comments that I have gotten on my channel in the last few years have been very painful. And... You can only take so much of that before you just kind of really just want to feel like asking yourself, you second guess, start second guessing yourself, like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why am I producing this? Why do I subject myself to this day after day? You know, I really started to feel like, oh, you know, um, it's okay um, because I'm going to get a. I'm gonna get the last laugh in the end, and and that sounds kind of stupid. If that makes any sense, it does. Yeah, right. You don't, and in the end, you don't because you end up basically, and then all of a sudden they start bringing in their friends, and will bring in their friends, which is good. Your subscriber base should go up here, but the problem is, is that some of these friends are. Absolutely, positively um, demeaning. Okay, um, and, and and we're talking about the ones that are demeaning. I have good subscribers too. I have many good subscribers. As I said, you have two types. You got the passives and you got the actives. I have a lot of passives, but I have a few actives that are also good people. And I don't have a problem with the good ones. I love talking to the good ones, but it's. The toxic ones that kind of make me kind of, you know, cringe a little because it's like, well, um, can't you guys ever say anything good about my content? And the fact is that I, I work hard and I spend almost 16 to 18 hours a day researching. I don't get a good night's sleep. A lot of times, um, like I did yesterday, which is kind of rare. I guess I was just getting kind of tired and getting kind of fed up looking at all this about the Brett Kavanaugh thing. And I, I'm not going to go down here. No, we'll just, you can discuss that on your show later. I don't want to go into the Brett Kavanaugh thing either because I think it's, um, it really is something that, that I want to go through on my channel right now. Okay. Um, so let me ask you questions. So what's your plans, um, for the holiday? Um, after the Saturday, after the Saturday show, I'm going to kind of step back from the production for a few days. Um, 
I will probably still do a vlog or two, but I'm not going to be doing the live streams on Sunday, Monday. Um, and then I'll come back and start a lot of the live stream on Wednesday. So it's not really a total vacay because I still am going to be producing content. I have a local, uh, another person that I trust will be doing one of the live streams either on Sunday or Monday. He wasn't sure which one. Um, so, and that's our 11 h 3 Yeah, he's going to do it because I gave him my key to the, to do the streaming. So he has to copy my stream key. And so, um, I think this will be good for me. Um, maybe... Maybe he can reach out to those toxic people. Maybe he can help to put them in their place. They seem to respect him better than me. And um, so I'll have to see what happens. But no matter what, you know, I um, I just really need a break um, from all the all the work that's being put into this. If you had the money, if you had the resources for your VK, what would you do? Um, I would love, um, since it's still warm out in South, I probably wouldn't go down South right now, but um, if it was when it was cooler in Florida, I probably would go to Disney World for at least a day um, just to enjoy oh just get away from you know all the things that are going on at Walt Disney World I think to me that would be a fantastic thing where I could go ahead maybe go ahead and meet you know go to the, the you know International Pavilion like uh, Little Norway and Maybe meet the, the local Elsa and Anna from the local Frozen at the Norwegian Pavilion kind of thing. I really would love that. I Just a chance to um, not have to worry about making content every day um, where I can go ahead and have a little fun. But you don't have the money for that. I don't have the money for that. And, um, no, you have gotten some subscribers that made donations to help you keep your health up with your eyesight and things. Yes. And I thank those people because that makes a lot of difference to have the eye drops. They do work. Most people don't realize the can't eye drops do work. They do. They're not perfect, but they work. They work. I mean, uh, my, it keeps my left eye clear. My right eye, the cataract's pretty heavy, so it's... It's, it's, it helps, but it's, I'm not going to totally get rid of the cataract in my right eye, but the left eye never really got a cataract. So the eye drops do is they keep my cataract from forming my left eye. It was, obviously, when, if I don't use the eye drops, I notice um, that it seems like my left eye is threatening to cloud up. And that's the reason why I need to use the eye drops right away, is to prevent that from clouding up, because that makes a difference. Um... Okay, now the next question for you is, now, what's your plans for the, for the, for the studio and the YouTube channel um, for this year? Do you get the renter's rebate? Uh, that depends on how much we get. You see, that's the part we kind of run into a bit of a sticky wicket because... I am technically authorized up to $700. But the state general legislature hasn't yet authorized the payout of the funds because the budget that they need authorized to pay out that money hasn't yet been processed. So um, we could be coming home with anywhere from zero to $700. What do you think it's going to happen? I think it's going to probably come, but I don't think I'm going to get, I'm going to get the full 700 Um, I really would love to have the full 700 What's your plans with the money? Um, 
I wanted to get a, a, a new computer. Oh, well, not new, new, but in good condition, second-hand machine. All right. And I had like two or three machines, as you know. And then the first one was to get an iMac. Um, 21.5 inch. Um, 8 gigabytes of memory. 1 terabyte hard drive space. Um, minimum of an i5 running at 2.5 gigahertz. Um, and that would be... I um, was originally thinking about a 2011 one. But then I might go for a 2013 um, because it has a little faster memory and a little faster bus. But, I mean, money's still tight. Yeah, money will still be tight. I, like, I've seen the prices. It can go anywhere, well, depending on how the condition the machine is. Um, they can go from anywhere from, you know, 250 and up. Right. Um, then I was thinking is, is well... I said, what about a Mac Pro and like a 2009 Mac Pro, a.k.a. the cheese grater, which looks like my Power Mac G5, except, of course, it's um, it's the Intel line Mac, Power Mac G5, or, you know, not Power Mac, but the um, Mac Pro. And, um, and I was thinking about getting a four or six core Xenon. Uh, ideally, I'd like to have two processors. And, um, let's say, let's just say for the sake of argument about the same specifications, say, um, minimum of four core machine with, I was thinking about eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM and, um, a one terabyte hard drive. And you can get one of those for a bit more, a little more because the fact is they're much more sought after because they're much more expandable. Right. And the problem was, is then you still have to buy a monitor, and uh, I don't have any extras right now laying around to uh, buy. And also, the monitor on the camera here is getting pretty flaky. Yeah, um, that is really, that's, that's just like I said with the Mac Pro. It's the same thing with this camera we are using, is that it is modular. You can replace parts of it. it if parts break um so like the monitor assembly comes off and then we just go buy another uh re car rear view backup camera monitor popping in and ready to go it's in some ways it's an advantage in some ways it's a match it's the same thing with the mac pro in the sense that you know if, if i want to add to it or when i replace the hardware i can just swap out the parts and or put the parts that i want Whereas with um, the other machines, it's just going to... Okay, finish your yarn. Okay. Um, with the other machine, you have to basically take the whole thing apart just to get uh, everything except for uh, ensemble models of the iMac to upgrade the RAM, which you can access through either a door in the back or like on the iMac... I think the 2010 in it's like in mine 2010 2011 it's like on the 2006. So you got the screws in the bottom and there's a couple of tabs you pull, and then the RAM chips come out and then you can replace the bad um the good chips, or the bad chips with good chips or more capacity. Um, whereas that computer I think it go up to 16 gigabytes. Right. Okay. So. That's what you want to do. Right. It's, it's one of the projects. And then, of course, the other thing we were thinking about was to finally get that um, isolation transformer. We kept talking about that. and um, But we also said that that was going to be like a, kind of like a lower priority project. Yes, it had a lower priority project. But still, all these projects and... And then, of course, we talked about, well, what if you were to use the same existing Mac you have now? Um, maybe go ahead and connect up an external mini DVI cable and, and then set up a second monitor and then buy yourself um, 
with um, an HDMI adapter and then go ahead, um, well, not an HDMI, but plug it straight in and then go ahead and um, get one of those MPEG encoders for like $210. But I don't really think it's going to be a good idea because you're still going to be stuck dealing with um, the um, fact that you're still using a piece of dog shit of a computer to do video. Um, I could do better if I got the newer Mac, uh, newer iMac or Mac Pro would do the same job. Then I'll be faster and we'll be able to do more and be able to access and load the screen faster. Yeah. Agreed. Um, okay, so, but the biggest thing here is, is like you said, is those bad people on your channel. How do they make you really feel? They make me feel like I'm not really appreciated because I'm, they don't really understand. They don't really appreciate what I'm putting in into these programs. Um, there are many that do appreciate what I'm doing and they appreciate the effort that goes into it because there's a lot of work. Like our 11H30 would, would, would vouch for and so would Cringe Report. The fact is there's a lot of work that's going into these and it's not just a fly-by-night thing. And it's taking a while to do everything and do a good job. And, and the case the way I do it, you also got legal blindness on top of that and hearing loss. And you're trying to deal with the phone. You're trying to, uh, you know, make a quality presentation. And right now, the biggest thing that's killing this show, as I said, is the computer. But it's not the only thing, but it certainly is a big part of it. The yawning helping. <laughs> Sorry, Lou. The mean is, look at it this way. Everything, okay... People have said about this couch, for example, it's so stayed. It's been a part of your set for ages. This is Michelle's regular couch, guys. Michelle, basically, this is the way her couch is set up every year. as your average couch. This is not just a studio set. This is her real living room. Exactly. And... Once we can discuss on another topic, I'd like to discuss on another day, if I don't mind. Um, what they call the she shed. Oh, yes, the she shed. Um, we were going to discuss that on your channel, but I really think um, that maybe in a couple days, since you only have some time, we can cover the she shed topic here um, and discuss why it's important. Well, let me just say it's the one thing I'm right now. It's more important, I think, for for married couples than individual women because individual women have their whole apartment to themselves. It's really different, or home, where it's the married couple um, that need that private time. Uh, he has a space, she has her space, a time when, you know, they can do their own individual things. Okay. Yeah, we'll discuss that another day. It's a great topic, and I'm going to go be fantastic to cover it. All right. Now, um, how do you think the audience is going to feel uh, when those few days off? I don't think most of them are really are going to make a big deal about it. I think it's going to be um, the ones that may make most of them complaining are going to be the ones that we would call the negative the negative influencers, those are the ones I think are going to be making the most vociferous noise. It's not those that are, um, that support, you know, emotionally support me. Those are not the ones that are going to be, you know, getting upset about it so much. And it's, it's sad because I really think it's important to remember that anybody who does YouTube videos, anybody who works, um, on a project, the most important thing is we love to be appreciated. And I think that's true with any on-screen talent or any, any kind of talent at all. Because, all right, let me give you an example. I know several celebrities both on and off the screen. And what they have told me is we love our audience, we love our fans really, really, and we really love them very much. 
but some of the fans expect us to be with them vicariously 24-7 through videos, through music, uh, whatever that the, the talent does. And, yeah, we have families, we have responsibilities that we have to do, and it really makes us feel kind of overwhelmed. And the sad truth is we also have a rusty, the dusty, that's dusty, you're yeah, right, <laughs> dusty cat. And he's one of the responsibilities I have. Okay. Um, come here. He's getting big. Oop, he sure is. He's getting big. Um, he's getting all muscles now. Well, you know, don't forget he's, uh, he's not fixed. And so he's, uh, he's got the magic tea going through his blood right now. Yeah, okay, get back to what you're talking about, please. Okay, what I'm trying to say is a lot of them, a lot of talent have um, a bit of a, we've got fragile egos. I don't think it's because it, it, most of them will probably agree with me when they say is, you know, we have a passion for what we do and we love what we do. And we do love adoring fans, and we do love on you know those who follow our products, and you know we're so used to getting some praise and admiration. And so for us, it's like it makes us feel good. And then you got your detractors, and and then they wear on us after a while. You know when they say you suck, you know you're not good, your content is lame. You know in some ways it. There's two levels of detractors. You got those that are doing the best to cause a constructive content, criticism that's constructive. That is not to destroy you, but to point out flaws in your presentation. In other words, those people are, are you know, I consider them a valuable resource. It's the ones that are just don't want to help at all and scream at you and, and tell you your content sucks. And then you go out there and you try to create new content and changes and they still say it sucks and they're never satisfied with your changes you're trying to do um and, and that works on un, un performers because they like oh well, why are you still watching me then if you don't like my content you know it's like and it really works done on their psyche too because it's like gee that's not good enough for anybody you know but what am I doing? I'm wasting my time. I'll never get ahead. I'll never go anywhere. Um, and it just totally works out. Yeah, it does. I don't know. Of course, you're still continuing your psychotherapy with your therapist. Yes. Um, I I talked to my therapist. I said I think we should try to keep the 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 program running because it's only once a month thing. It's essential for me to have this time when I can talk to somebody it's to me it's important and she agreed that yeah you know maybe this would be a good idea to get the program going it's not like it's like a major issue where you have to come in every week or something but it's just a once a month thing is a good way so like like you said like you can basically uh, you know safety valve off those pressures and those anxieties and angers um, instead of potentially exploding on top of your audience. And your cell phone's ringing. And my cell phone's ringing. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, guys. Um, thanks for watching this. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.